if a beautiful woman comes and sings a beautiful song or does something just like wow you will just want to experience that and you drop everything else you're doing to watch it and then you'll get her name and figure out where she's going to go next and, and go there and watch it again so that's the way that jiva feels about maya Tatkartam chabi, chabi padyate. It thinks of itself as a product dependent on Maya or created by Maya. Ch- Tatkrita, what Maya creates. So it's actually pretty amazing what she's doing. Is she's like, because we all have different things that we want, the ways that we want to experience our bhagavan Because after all, we are, we are, uh, bhagavan, like we are Bhagavan. We're small samples of Bhagavan. So whatever tendencies Bhagavan has, we also have. So we're going to want to experience our Bhagavan-ness. So Maya says, cool, here's here. You can be this very strong, manly king. See what the world is like, like that. Well, next time you can be this very beautiful, that dancer that Vic was talking about. You can be that one next time. You want to be a turtle? Turtles are cool. They experience life in a different way. I got all these things in my store that I can create. Bodies and minds that you can be. Try them all. Try them again a second time because there's unlimited flavors and colors that you can be with these things. So that's how we just wind up infinitely fascinated with the different options that she presents. Why is she doing it? I I know we're going to get in this tomorrow, but it's too interesting not to say right now. She's doing it as a favor to Krishna, actually, which is a very humbling thing to, to comprehend. She's doing it as a favor to Krishna because we're a bunch of drunk slobs. So she's like, Krishna's like, can you keep these people occupied? <laughs> keep them occupied, give them something to do so they don't hurt or interfere with everything that's going on over here. So she's like, okay, I'll do that. So she keeps us occupied. And then, then the fourth thing that he sees is bhakti, which is bhakti is the connector and it's the provider of happiness. It's the thing that can connect the jiva to it's what connects consciousnesses together. It's specifically is the thing that connects Jiva to Krishna, to Purusha. That's what Bhakti does. It's the yoga. It's the yogi guy. It's the thing that causes yoga or connection. It's love. Bhakti means love, and love causes connection. It also means Shakti. Bhakti is the Shakti, is one of the Purusha's Shaktis. It's the, it's the primary Shakti, Adi Shakti. And then every other kind of Shakti is some derivative of this, this Shakti. Connecting, it connects the cause to, to the effect, etc. It connects things. Bhakti means connection or sharing. Actually, the literal uh, etymological derivation of the word Bhakti is, means to share or be connected in, in an experience. So like when you, even the word Pudge, Pudge is like when you are eating Bhogjan, Bhogjan, Pudge. Something which is enjoyable is called the Bhog, uh, Bhagawan. It's all the concept of you are going to experience this thing. So it means you're going to stick your eyes on it, you're going to stick your hands on it, you're going to experience it, you're going to touch it, you're going to share with it. So the, actually, the Vedic concept of experience itself is very fascinating. Vedic concept of experience is becoming one with the object that you're experiencing or sharing an existence with the object that is you're experiencing and that is ba- that is essentially what bhakti is it's bhakti means the unifier and that's where it's translated as love this is the strongest unifier Bhakti is the Shakti that enables the Jiva to connect with a Dokshaja. So what does a Dokshaja mean? A Dokshaja means, this is amazing, this word. There's, the root of the word is Aksha. Aksha means your eyes. Akshaja means something that your eyes produce. So in other words, all the experience, this is a little, means seeable things. Akshaja means, Akshaja means seeable things. So, and that stands for, it means experienceable things. And adha means somebody that squishes it, or belittles it, or humiliates it. So the name that 
Vyasa is using to describe Krishna or the Purusha in this verse is Adhokshaja. This being makes all the stuff that you can experience seem unimportant, belittles all of your experiences. The experience of this being belittles all the other experiences. Like when they love, like if you go to a concert and there's like eight bands and the first seven bands are, or sometimes it happens more often like this, like the fifth band is really surprisingly amazing. And then you just go home remembering the fifth band. You can't remember one, two, three, four, five. You even forget the headlining band. That is called adokshaja. The other experiences were squashed by the superiority, the incredible superiority of this one particular experience. So that's an amazing thing too. And that's why the jiva can easily become attracted to a dokshaja if it can just hear about a dokshaja. Anarto Pashamam Shakshat Bhakti will nullify the jiva's fascination with Maya by revealing the more fascinating. Yeah, outdo, outdoing, but outdoing. Atha etymologically means done, means like pushing it down. So. That's why bhakti can most effectively eradicate the jiva's undesirable situation, anartopasamam shakshat, because it can reveal something more fascinating. So maya is super fascinating. This is, an, this is a mind-blowing thing that you get from Vyasa Samadhi is he sees maya, this beautiful entity that can, can create beautiful things and the jivas are intoxicated with them. But the dokshaja is, is, the word dokshaja is used to mean more, much, much, much more beautiful than the maya. Much, much more intoxicating and fascinating than the maya is the supreme person with bhakti. So it's so much more that it will eradicate the, the jiva's in, interest in maya very quickly and pull it into the association of Bhagavatam. That's what he saw. And then that's what the whole Bhagavatam explains. So Krishna's got, in summary, he's got three kind of potencies. Maya, which is the Shakti that produces delusion. Jiva, which is the Shakti that experiences delusion. And then Bhakti, which is the Shakti that frees the Jiva from Maya and gives it a relationship to Krishna. From our point of view, this is what the three uh, energies do. From Krishna's point of view, Maya is the Shakti which deludes the Jiva. The Jiva is the one that is deluded by Maya. And Bhakti is the one that deludes him, that intoxicates him and delights him and can connect by, by connecting people to him. And these terms are often called, the, these three Shaktis are often called Bahiranga, which means that Maya is extrinsic. It's not directly related. It's Apashraya. It's a, a bit at a distance from Bhagavan. So it's extrinsic, it's external, or it's like an outward energy. And then there's Jiva, uh, then there's Bhakti, which is Antaranga Shakti. It's the Shakti that's directly involved with Bhagavan. So it's called like intrinsic to Bhagavan or it's internal. It's an inward energy. And then the Jiva is standing in the middle of the both, has a little bit of both. Like, it's, so this is exactly what we talked about in the email with there's seer scene, seer and a scene, and then there's a scene seer or seeing seer, a seeing scene. That thing that's a bit of both, but neither of either is Tatastha Shakti. It's intermediate, it's marginal, it's between the two. Like if you have land and then you have sea, but then there's shore, when the shore is neither in on the land nor in the sea, but both, sometimes the waves cover it, the tide covers it, sometimes not. That shore is tatasta. That's what the, the literally, it means, uh, what is it? Like bank of a river is called a tata. The bank of a river is called a tata. Tatasta means, like on that spot of the tata, of the shore. So there's like a, a land, which is like maya, there's a sea, which is like bhakti, and then there's jiva, which is tata. On a shore, it has 
the nature of both or the ability to interact with both. Those are the three shaktis of Vishnu, Krishna, Bhagavan. 